if you don't have boundaries, if you don't have definitions, if you don't understand what actually serves you, it's going to be really difficult for you to say no. I think it's one of the most powerful words in the English language. And if you are looking to achieve great things in your life, your bank account, your relationships, your business, your fitness, you have to get really good at saying no. Because again, this is the third time I've said it. People and things are vying for your attention all the time. You have to get really, really good at saying no, not only to others, but also to yourself. Welcome to the Awaken the Awesome podcast with your host, Olivier D. This is Awaken the Awesome, a podcast bringing a down to earth approach to personal growth. On this show, we're helping individuals just like you learn about tapping into their incredible potential through insightful interviews and inspiring lessons. Our mission is to encourage you to always keep pushing towards achieving your dreams and to stay awesome along the way. Hello, hello, awesome tribe, and welcome back to another episode of the Awaken the Awesome podcast. Today's guest is a very special one for many reasons. He's been an ear I could rant to, a sounding board for some of my wildest ideas, an uncomfortably relentless, no BS accountability partner an incredible source of support and guidance. One of the very few individuals who have featured on the podcast as both former guest as well as a guest host. A fellow warrior, father, and friend. Someone for whom I hold an incredible amount of respect and esteem. And we've never even met face-to-face. Brad Bodnerchuk indeed is a certified associate leadership coach that brings an unmatchable energy, a high level of creativity, and passion to all the work that he does. Having held multiple leadership roles within a handful of organizations and having coached hundreds of individuals, Brad is suited to work alongside any leader that is passionate about creating positive change in business and in life. Brad is passionate about connecting with individuals on a deep level and then leveraging that connection to truly understand their vision for the future. With this illustrated vision, Brad then gets to work setting up the practical steps to help them achieve their goals. This conversation is as much of an excuse to catch up as it is filled with Brad's singular observations that never fail to make me shut up and listen. From the importance of boundaries to the power of saying no, to keeping ourselves accountable as much as giving ourselves grace. It's always an honor and a thrill to connect with Brad for his incredible generosity of time, wisdom, and insight, which are a privilege to get to share with you all. So let's get into this. Awaken the Awesome, episode 195. With Brad Bodnichuk. Here we go. But what was I, what was I going to say? No, I just wanted to acknowledge the fact that, you know, even coming into this, um, I'm really, really grateful for um, this, uh, this journey of connecting with uh, wonderful individuals and people that you meet so randomly. And one of the guiding, um, I would say, uh, compasses of this podcast is the fact that, you know, you get to meet people out of nowhere. And for some reason, a lot of people remained, you know, esteemed guests but eventually you keep building on these relationships and you keep checking in you keep keeping them warm you keep you know fanning the flames of these relationships and you actually build friendships and people who stay in your life i don't know why i don't know how but you actually call them friends you call them brothers you call them compadres you call them people you can check in people who you know who are totally supportive of the podcast people who are like-minded who teach you about discipline who teach you about you know setting standards you teach you about being a good person you teach you about being vulnerable teach you about being a friend teach you about you know being an ear to listen to and brad bogner has been that person for me and more uh, throughout these years that we shared you know brad has been a previous guest Brad has been brad has been a previous guest host <laughs> brad mm-hmm. has seen the thick and the thin of the ins and outs of me both in front of the mic or behind the mic you know i know i'm just you know just throwing 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 so many compliments but it's a lot of consideration a lot of truth and a lot of heart uh that really jazzes me you know to be able to reconnect with you because we've been you know we've, we're long overdue for this you know mm. but in a lot of ways and for a lot of reasons as a father as a warrior as a man of dignity as a man of character as a genuine person and i really mean that a genuine human being who's you know who's a terrific being both in and off the gram <laughs> <laughs> Because, you know, in these worlds, it's always about the snippets of our lives. But we've been fortunate enough to share a lot of great conversation, a lot of en- engaging energy. And for that, I just want to say thank you uh, for being who you are, uh, not just for Lindsay, not just for Cole, not just for Lena, 
but everyone and anyone who is privileged enough to be near or far within your universe. Just want to say thank you uh, for being who you are, Brad. And of course, again, heartfelt welcome back to the Awakening Awesome Podcast, the return of Brad wow. Bonner, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. <laughs> Good to have you back, man. Good to see you. Good yeah, to see you. What an intro. Uh, I feel like if you don't write uh, cards, like Hallmark cards, or you don't pen people's intros to the Oscars and stuff, you definitely <laughs> should. You do so well at that. I, I say to people sometimes when they just keep going and keep going and keep going, I I used to say, um, who put a nickel into this person? It's kind of a joke, but listening to you is just, it's so eloquent. And um, yeah, it means a lot coming coming from you and I accept all of it. Uh, and yeah, it's it's been far too long. I appreciate your patience. I also appreciate your friendship. And for those of you that obviously don't see the messages that Olivier and I share, um, you are so consistent with just, you know, I call them random reach outs and those random reach outs mean so much to me. I think it's, it's moments like that. It's actions like that, that have remained, uh, that have allowed for us to remain, um, friends. And, uh, I, I really do appreciate you as a, as a person as a man and um i also really respect you as a podcast host as well so it's my absolute honor to hold space for you and your podcast again tonight you're the man you're the man you're the man why why not just for reconnecting why it was important for us to connect because it's always important for you know we always want to you know reach out you know to the the tribe as i like to call it you know reach out to the tribe because they always come to us um you know for down-to-earth uh realities of ins and outs and the personal truths that you know we keep bringing forth along the journey because we're all building our journey along the way with every single step every single stone that we set forward and we always try to give as much as we can in terms of wisdom but you particularly I've always been able to rely on, you know, for a great, um, I have to say, very scathing <laughs> honesty, uh, because you're always real. You're always real with me, you know, and when I call bullshit, you call me out on it. You know, when I'm really in my own, you know, self, uh, self-doubt, you call me out on it and you never fail. You never fail to actually challenge me, even when you know, when you see me you know, just being shy within my own self. And that mm. is something that is precious. And why I wanted to start this conversation, how important is it, you know, to, to let people know? Because we are sometimes so fearful and so bashful to actually speak our own truth. And for some of us, that becomes our excuse. But having someone like you in in your corner is always good. That's why we need to have someone to actually call our truth. But how do we be that per what are the, having to rely on someone else? How do we be that person for ourselves? How do we speak? How do we step into our truth and accept it? Oh, geez. I mean, how much time do you have? Um, <laughs> I think, I think to your point, having a support system is so important, but how do we step into our truth is, I think like you said, I think it was before we turned the mics on, you said, um, at least this is how I understood it. Like it's, it's actually really easy. Like life is actually really easy. We just don't need to overcomplicate it. And I think if we are looking to discover our truths, we actually need to slow down and we actually need to be quiet. We actually need to sit still. And it's very counterintuitive in 2023 with everything that's going on. And I know you talk about it a lot on your podcast as well about, you know, our energies and our attentions and it really our attention is being, um, what's the word? Like it's being challenged all the time by so many different things. So for us as individuals to really un uncover and discover our truth, we have to turn off a little bit. And I mean that both figuratively um, and literally and just sit and for some reason, I feel as though I have this calling and also this bit of a gift where I can allow for you and others in my circle to be vulnerable with me. And then in turn, what I'm able to do is sift through the, the mud or the BS, if you will, and, and give you the real deal. But I, I also think it's important, and I'll end with this. 
and allow you to jump in. I also think it's really important for me to say to you, because I've been thinking about this a lot, and this is ve- me being very candid with you. I've been thinking about our interactions a lot, interactions when I have held your feet to the fire a bit. And I did that because it felt real and it felt uh, honest. But I want you to understand that when I was doing that, I felt as though I was talking to myself as well, because I see so much of my own hesitation, my own um challenges and getting in my own way in people like you so when i share that with you and when i when as as you said when i can be a bit scathing um a lot of it's directed at me as well so you are just my you're just my muse at that point um but it, it does frustrate me it frustrates me when i see someone and I'll use you as an example who has so many gifts and so many talents and who wants so much as well, yet they're getting in their own way. And the least I can do is say, stop doing that you because need that. that's what I need to hear as well. Someone, we need that. We need that because it, it really um, resonates with a lot of people uh, who reach out, you know, the people who, you know, who keep, you know, mentioning how, you know, this episode resonated with them. We're like, well, you know, you make it seem so easy. Well, I keep telling them all the time, dude, I'm so, I am so, and you understand this so well, because we've talked a lot about this because it's, it's very easy to think that, you know, that person that, you know, you're looking up to has it all figured out when they don't, I can tell you for a fact that they don't, Mm-hmm. We all, <laughs> everybody buys toilet paper, all right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah, everybody has that form of down-to-earth reality that, you know, that exemplifies the fact that, you know, we are all human and you need to bring everything back down to earth, okay? I'm happy that I can, you know, live this truth with you and serve you as some form of example, but you have to understand that you are the only person in your own way. And that's one thing that you've always brought home. Whether it's keeping you accountable for the book, which still has to happen, whether it's me like, you know, not feeling that I have it in me for another episode. And you're like, okay, what what does that mean? Mm -hmm. (laughs) So and I believe that we could only get into our own way. You will only go as far as you inherently want to. That's something I also learned in my own reality that um, and that's something that you've also taught me as well. The fact that no matter what you tell yourself at the end of the day, it's your decision. It's your decision. It's not your spouse's fault. It's not your kid's fault. It's not your job's fault. It's not money. It's not where you live. A lot of these are circumstances. But at the end of the day, you have a choice. You have a choice. And whether you choose to, you know, just leave things, just, you know, call it a day and go home and sleep. That's you. If you choose to, okay, let's go for a walk this morning and minus 20 degrees. Let's do it. Or let's get up at 4 a.m. to go to the gym. Let's do it. But it is your choice. And whether or not it's a good or a bad choice, it's, you know, it's your, it's your gauge. It's your decision. It's your measuring scale. It's up to you. And for a lot of people, they refuse to believe that it's that simple. Mm. Yeah, it's also, it's also very easy to point fingers as well. And something that I, I find myself repeating so much right now with clients is be very careful at when you point your finger at someone else because when you point your finger at someone else there's three fingers pointing back at you oh and <laughs> it's just for me and i and i again i say all these things to my clients i say all these things when i'm coaching others but it's me reiterating it to myself and catching myself oh my gosh am i it's it's almost like I have an objective view of myself. It's now outside of me and I'm watching as I'm watching as I teach this and go, okay, well now you can't be the hypocrite that blames someone else for something. Oh, gas prices are high or Oh, inflation or, Oh, that person cut me off. Well, there's three fingers pointing back at me. And that's just, it's that to me is such a powerful thing is to your point is take control of everything and understand that it is a choice Viktor Frankl, in his incredibly famous book, Man's Search for Meaning, had that beautiful quote where he says, the the space between the space that exists between stimulus and response Mm -hmm. is is a choice. That's where choice lives. So we can be like animals and be stimulated and respond right away, right? Or we can give space 
between that stimulus and the response and make a real choice to your point, getting up early and going for a walk or going to the gym or having that tough conversation or uh, hiring that coach or starting that podcast, whatever it may be. Uh, the stimulus and response thing is another key reminder to me to understand that every single moment of the day I'm in charge and I'm in charge of making those choices. For anyone who hasn't uh, read it or listened to it, in my case, I, I grabbed the audio book. Victor Frankl was actually recommended by a previous guests. I'd never heard of it. Shame on me, but I did. And it's one of the most powerful reads I've done in my life. Uh, mm -hmm. Just to imagine how this individual has gone through all the trauma of, again, being in a concentration camp and overcoming and the horrors that he had to, you know, just witness, not only endure, but witness. And I can only imagine in those circumstances where you see the worst of the worst of the worst of the human condition, but also mm -hmm. the best of it, because in terms of he teaches you resilience, he teaches you empathy, he teaches you perspective. Um, it's a very difficult read uh, because you can't help but if you're open to the experience, you can't help but, you know, even attempting to put yourself in the person's shoes, but you can't. It will never be possible. But it is worded with such truth that I do recommend people uh, do. It's a read. It's a read that mm -hmm. you have to read. It's not mm -hmm. an easy read, but if you have it in you, you which I know you can, but it's it's definitely worth it. It's definitely worth it. Thank you for yeah. bringing it up. Yeah, no, thank you. And I agree. It's I hope that never happens ever again in, in the history of humankind. And I think for that reason, everyone should read that book because someone did live through that. And it just shows you that he wasn't a victim and he didn't quit. And he under, he learned so much about life through that experience that he we are now in the 21st century we're lucky enough that we can go spend 22 dollars on it on the book and, and learn it mm. um because like you said uh obviously there's travesties in the world today and we don't won't get into all of that but that will never happen again god willing and it, it behooves us to read those books to learn because we hope that that never happens again. And it is, it's a stunning, it's a stunning piece with so many uh, important messages and words of wisdom. Just have to, just have to, you have to understand also that you are building the future that you haven't seen yet. So your future self is already banking on the fact that you will make better decisions for the future coming forward. Very philosophical, but you always have to remind that. I always remind myself that as well, when you're a father, I'm a father. And when I think of, because um, sometimes I have those reactions coming from the third world, growing up in Haiti and thing, and having seen uh, lack, having seen, you know, what a real bad day looks like. I when my kids act out, <laughs> I want to lash out. But at the same time, I'm like, you know what? They will never understand. I don't know who was telling me that, but no matter how much that you would want to, they will never understand. And all of that is perspective. And all you can take is take the best lessons of what you know. And yeah, the world is messed up. The world is going to actually knock on their door and slap them in the face at some point because it's a cycle. We have to go through these experiences, hopefully not too dramatic, not too traumatic, but it's, it is going to happen. But empathy is a very real thing. And mm -hmm. for, for yourself, when you look at your beautiful children, your two beautiful children, I love when you share those wonderful little candid pics. So sometimes I'm like, oh, I got them, ah, oh, those cheeks. But <laughs> do you... Do you accept, do you also, do you also get that, that feeling of humility? And what I mean by that is you don't have all the answers and doesn't that bring it back to a certain humanity as well? Well, okay, you're supposed to lead them. You're supposed to guide them, teach them, protect them, provide for them. But at the same time, you don't have all the answers. And I guess that even for ourselves, still talking about our journey, we don't have all the answers, but we have to venture forward regardless. How does that make you feel? Human. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm not supposed to have all the answers. I and I I feel as though for a long time, a majority of my life, probably between my 20s and my 30s, I've I felt like I had to pretend like I did know everything, and that's actually impossible. And it didn't serve me at all. Mm. Uh, so understanding that I don't know everything 
is just real and it's it's i wouldn't even say it's humbling it's just factual and you you brought up lena and cole our our daughter and our son and i look at them as incredible teachers and i also look at them as if you want to get again a little bit philosophical i also look at them and their job in them teaching me is they're bringing up areas in my life where i still need work so Mm. when they do act out and going back to that victor frankel um quote there's a stimulus them acting out and then generally there's a quick response well is that what i want that's me being very animalistic and is that Mm. what they need so i'm still learning all of this even even in my work that i do it doesn't benefit me at all to walk around like I know everything. And I actually find that really distasteful and actually a massive turnoff in people. I actually came across that a couple of weeks ago with a prospective client and I tried not to let it bother me. And I eventually did let it go, but I find that attitude um, just so fixed and so closed minded. So I'm a, I wake up every day And I may not announce it this way, but I think it internally and consciously. I'm a white belt. So Mm -hmm. like martial arts, I walk around like a white belt. I can learn something from you. I can learn something from the person at the grocery store. I can learn something from uh, the client that I'm working with. Someone can teach me something and my kids are no different. So I am, I guess, yeah, I guess I, I am humbled by that. And I... I try my absolute best, although it's difficult. I try my absolute best to listen and learn because it's impossible to know everything. And I'm amazed by people like you and and my kids because of what you can teach me. And, you know, I was asking that because too much, too often, I hear a lot of people, dare I say, complaining about the fact that I'm supposed to have all the answers. I'm supposed to be at this point. I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be, I should, I should, I should, I should, I should. As And sometimes I like to challenge them. Like, compared to who? Compared to what? Compared to why? why? Why do you feel that need? Well, I want, like, why, 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 why? Oh, because so-and-so is at this point or at my age, I should, or with so many kids, they should, or there's so much of that comparison going on and i think that's a detriment to your to your well-being because as i be, i don't know who said it but i believe it's the saying that says comparison is the thief of joy mm-hmm. and pa- and you're when you're constantly you know feeding because we're talking i'm really big about internal dialogue and i know you are too about the words that we let inside our brain and the words that we use are basically a dialogue that we're having with ourselves and sometimes that can be so harsh and that can be so draining and people don't understand the damage that they're doing to themselves. And when you're constantly saying something that you should do and you should do, I love the fact that you bring up that, you know what, as uncomfortable as it might seem, it is very useful to you to be at peace with the fact that you don't know everything. Because what would be the point of the journey in that in that regard? See? Mm. And mm. I'm hoping you can speak to people listening to us where, you know, when they heard you about what your kids are teaching you, that, you know what, it's okay the 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 thrill is in the unknown and i'm going through this right now um as i talk to you i'm looking at a new career you know coming out two weeks i have no idea what i'm going to do uh yeah there's a job description but it's in a totally new field totally new industry i've never done this like in any way shape or form but you know what i'm taking a chance into the universe because you know what it is my choice my decision and my adventure come what may and i'm at peace with that and that is a very very fulfilling feeling Mm. that's beautiful that's awesome and i'm very proud of you and happy for you and i know from again our conversations that we have offline that not that you were seeking you know a big shift but i could could tell a good sense that you were looking for some sort of change and i'm I'm very happy that that's happening for you. And what a great way to start a new year with a, with a fresh beginning like that and a new career. And uh, I don't know how much detail you want to give away on your show, but you're going to have some pretty fantastic coworkers or coworker, I should say. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, because like working <laughs> working with my wife is gonna be something. So it's no, it's not a trade secret, but working with my wife is gonna be something. So it's uh, it should be interesting. And believe it or not, you know, a lot of people have been asking. I'm definitely gonna try to have her on the podcast at some point this year. Oh yeah, absolutely. I need to have her on. You asked me to have her on. A lot of people have been saying, like, you know, it's high time she has to be on because she she's more of the producer behind the scenes. I'm like, no, dear, like too many people want you on. Like you yeah. have to have some time on this podcast. So should be fun. Should be fun. So are you guys it, is it a no brainer? You'll be carpooling together then? Is this pretty much pretty yeah. much? Yeah. Unless yeah. she wants to sleep in <laughs> some point or something. Uh, but no, but yeah, we'll definitely be carpooling because like I said, it's really close to home, which is beautiful. Uh, mm-hmm. my old job, which should be like, like I said, 10, 10, 10 minutes, 12 minutes max when like this job is even closer. So it's going to be pretty insane. It's uh, going to be a whole new dynamic, trying new things. I'm excited about this. It's, it's all about trying new things because if all you keep doing is the same and being in the same place and doing the same things with the same habits and the same processes, how can you dare expect any change or any progress within your journey. You know, mm, yeah, that's so the, the reality you have to give to yourself. I read it the other day and then I, I said it the other day is, and it was, it's just so simple, but it's so beautiful. And it was, if nothing changes, then nothing changes. There you go. And I just, I just had to laugh there you go. at it. I was like, that's so true. Like, Oh, I want it to change. Okay. Well, what are you changing? What are you changing? I want something different. What, okay. What have you done differently? Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. And, which is why it makes a really good pivot um, because I also want to have you one because a lot of people, I'm really big about discipline. I'm really big about accountability, something that you and I talk about at length. And you, uh, in your field, in uh, your line of work and uh, all the consultations you do, you're very, very, very adamant about processes. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people need to understand there's a huge difference. Why I bring up the word discipline, so what I love, there's a huge discipline, a huge difference between motivation and discipline. And I understand, you know, from the word processes, the way you explain it is the fact that if you can quantify, if you can deconstruct the ongoing process that's going on, you can actually let the client or the person, because it applies to the individual as well, not just the enterprise or the company whatsoever, or you want to call it, something is going wrong. If you're not liking it, you need to know what it is. And a lot of us fail to actually have the cojones, if you will, have the audacity, have the, have, you know, have the wherewithal to take a second to deconstruct our process. And a lot of times where we fail, that is a very essential step towards basically the change, if you will. And why I want to, you know, you know, pick your brain a little bit is how do we go about, you know, deconstructing? How do we go about self analyzing you know to better interpret you know our script because that's that's what's doing us a disservice in the first place Mm, great question uh for me it just for me we first have to seek a high level of awareness and unfortunately a lot of us don't have that and it's not a slight on anybody it's just again we're so over stimulated by so much going on around us we are on autopilot so much and the unconscious brain so there's two parts to our brain the conscious and the unconscious and a lot of us rely on that unconscious so much and it does really do us it does us well in regards to we don't have to think about when you get up in the morning you don't have to think about okay i need to put my foot on the floor and then my right foot on the floor and then i need to start lifting like engaging these muscles that is all done by our subconscious mind Mm -hmm. but where it can really hold us back as far as growth and as far as enacting change is when we are unaware of the unconscious actions or processes that aren't serving us so if you're listening to this right now and you're someone who when you wake up in the morning the first thing you do is check your phone or go onto your laptop or engage in any type of technology there. I mean, there's so much science out there that just shows how detrimental that can be in the moment, but also for the rest of your day and how it, it impacts you on a neurological level. But again, that's an unconscious thing. So when it comes to looking to achieve something new or looking to create change, you have to look at you have to, one, first look for a high level of awareness and going back to my original point that I made about just slowing down, about really disconnecting and decompressing. 
and tuning into yourself, which again, sounds a little bit woo woo, but there are fantastic meditation apps. Um, there are breathing exercises you can do. All of these things will allow you to slow down and become more self-aware. That self-awareness could look something like, oh, I notice that when the kids are acting out, the first thing that I do unconsciously is I grab my phone and I start scrolling through Instagram. Mm -hmm. And actually, that's that's actually a very real example of myself. And uh, I'm a bit embarrassed to say it, but it gives you just the context of what that could look like. So one, if I want to be, if a goal of mine is to be a more engaged father and actually less engaged on my phone or in social media, then I need to recognize that process or that habit or that behavior, if you will, and then find a way to interrupt it. So when my kids are acting out, I innately, meaning my unconscious mind takes over, I want to go reach for that phone and mm -hmm. just and just numb out. What I need to do instead, and I won't put too long of a tail on this kite, but what I need to do instead is ask myself, who do I want to be? How do I want to show up? So as Stephen Covey says in uh, Seven Rules for Highly Effective People, he talks about begin with the end in mind. So who, how do I want to show up for my kids? How do I want to show up for my client? How do I want to show up for my partner? If I have that in mind, it's going to allow me to again build that awareness level to go, wait, I wouldn't act like that if that was how I was trying to show up. I wouldn't just grab my phone and numb out. I would actually maybe get down on my knees with my kids mm -hmm. and talk to them a little slower. Maybe put my hand on their shoulder. Uh, maybe I would slow down my speech. Maybe I would lower the volume of my voice, changing that process to get a different result. But for me, it all begins with increasing that higher level of awareness. And I may have already said the last thing I'll say, but I'll, this will be the last thing that I'll say. This, Something is, that I, your, this is your space, <laughs> no, man. But it just, Stop it just, editing yourself. It just downloaded to me. I'm going to share it. So I, I was lucky enough to be part of um, a new coaching certification this past year. And through the certification, they talk about this idea of going from subjective to objective. So if mm -hmm. you're listening, you can't see what I'm doing with my hand, but subjective is internal in the mind. Objective is outside. You can actually see it. Mm -hmm. And that to me is such an incredible practice when you can watch yourself doing those things, when you can watch yourself staying in bed, when you said, didn't I say I was going to get up at four o'clock or six o'clock, whatever it may be, and go for a mm -hmm. workout. So if you're able to switch from subjective to objective, have that outer body experience, build that high level of awareness. And going back to the Stephen Covey point as well, begin with the end in mind. We have to be crystal clear. What is it we're actually working towards? Mm -hmm. What do you want to achieve? Then only then can we then reverse engineer it and look about, look at, part of me, how are we showing up and are my actions matching the vision? That was long. I apologize. No, it just, it just seemed real. See, now, now, now you're being an Olivier now. I'm the one. I'm the one who <laughs> does that. Like my friend Max, uh, who did um, uh, last year's end of year episode, and the first thing he did starting off the episode, he was like, "I love you. You're my brother. Just do me one favor. I do not want you to say at any given time." All oh, right. <laughs> long ass answer. I'm sorry. I don't want you to say that. So. <laughs> I, how about this? I will agree to never say it again on your show. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. But you brought up so many points, and I guess I'm just piggyback, piggybacking. And to bring it down for people, you, it's, a, it's, it's, I believe it's as simple as a pen and paper, or as, as dumb as saying. And it doesn't need, you don't need to say, okay, I'm going to build that multi-million dollar company tomorrow. You could just say something as simple as, okay, I'm going to wake up 15 minutes earlier. Okay. You're maybe not a morning person. Some people are conditioned differently. I, for a really long time, when I first started being on the job market, I, my, one of my first job was working night shifts because I was a full-time student. And the only time I could work was at night. So I really got used to very little sleep. And waking up early. And I thought there was like so much power into waking up early. I just love waking up early. My family, my both my kids and my wife cannot hold a candle to me and waking up early. I can wake up at three. I can wake up at four. I am totally fine. But a lot of them like sleeping in and that's okay. But you need to know your formula. And once you know your ingredients, 
um, that's when you know that, okay, what do you, what can you do with and what can you do without? That's what I wanted to bring on because that's also part of your process. Meaning, okay, what, what is useful to me and what is totally useless to me? Mm. Something as basic, like my, like myself, um, I stopped drinking coffee and I'm not going to give you a like health reason whatsoever. No, I really just really analyze myself. I'm like, why do I drink coffee? Exactly. I have absolutely no reason to drink coffee and it's not shading at anyone who drinks coffee i make coffee for my wife all the time totally fine but it's just me it can be something as dumb as not drinking coffee to saying like you know what there are certain people i am no longer dealing with there are certain attitudes or certain energy i'm no longer allowing into my environment and we're still under discipline and I guess it's also when we're talking about what we can do with what well, so what we can do without we were we had this in our show notes. How important is it to say no, Brad? Because I know you're also big about that. There are things that you will no longer allow in your universe. There's things you no longer allow yourself to tell yourself. There are certain conversations you're not having. There's certain content you're not ingesting. How is how important is it to say no? Mm, incredibly important. One of the most powerful words in the English language in my opinion and it takes a lot and i'm reminded of uh jesse itzler who's someone that i look up to he's a very successful entrepreneur and he said at one point he realized that he no longer wanted to laugh at jokes that weren't funny and what he meant by that was he found himself in meetings and pitches and sales calls, and he always found himself either saying yes to things that he really truly to his core didn't want to say yes to, mm-hmm. or as he put it, he was laughing at jokes that weren't even funny. And he got to a point where he said, no more, it doesn't serve me. And when we get to that point, I think that's part of the process as well of letting go of other people's opinions of us. And mm-hmm. how how we hold people's opinions of us higher oh, than our own opinion of ourselves, and saying no for me goes hand in hand in that, and saying saying no is is part of my reality now. But I do it in a way, in my opinion, that is as true as I can do it. And I'll give you an example for so say for example you said to me. Hey Brad, can we do a podcast on Friday? Friday night. Friday night is typically a date night for Lindsay and myself. So I wouldn't say I can't do that, but I would say I won't be able to do that. Because mm-hmm. saying I can't do it isn't actually true. I could mm-hmm. do it. I can mm-hmm. physically do it. I can come down here, I can put the headphones on, we can do this. But saying I won't be able to do that is me making a choice. That is me saying no, and I think in a very kind and understanding way. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have boundaries, if you don't have definitions, if you don't understand what actually serves you, it's going to be really difficult for you to say no. But I think, again, my original my original answer to your question was, I think it's one of the most powerful words in the English language. And if you are looking to achieve great things in your life, your bank account, your relationships, your business your fitness, you have to get really good at saying no. Because again, this is the third time I've said it. People and things are vying for your attention. All the time. All all the time. You have to get really, really good at saying no. Not only to others, but also to yourself. One thing that I saw, still on the same topic, one thing that I realized that I guess it's also part of our social conditioning And I think that also falls under the fact that we are afraid to offend because the simple fact that I've learned, I've learned this in customer service and sales, because the the, every time that you get a sales call or like someone pitching you at something of telemarketing, they're so good and they're so nice and they're so kind. Or you go to a car dealership and they just like hammer you and they've done, they've been so kind they've been so nice and welcoming and warm. Uh, It feels so wrong to say no, but yeah, you should. Do you want it? Do you want to think about it? Is it something that you want? Like, no, just, just say no. And sometimes a lot of us fall into that trap, as you mentioned, because we think that requiring or imposing those boundaries on the other person somehow makes us seem rude, makes us seem, you know, um, 
uh what's the word i'm looking for you know like just almost like almost like better than oh you're yeah too, uh, yeah yeah well, very pompous and so like well, what what's your deal well i am setting boundaries because i need this and i don't need that and that's okay or sometimes someone stuff stuff that happens to me all the time as you know i'm very good at holding space but sometimes i am not that person mm-hmm. i can't be that person because my cup runneth full and i'm i cannot be that person for you and when i know that i'm going to be more of a hindrance to you than an asset i have to be able to tell you like you know what I love you care about you i understand that you need me at this time but i cannot be that person for you can i and, can i be a can i be a dirty word for doctor? sure my friend you can you you can you're just ah, choosing not to. Yes. that's the difference yes you're making you're making an active choice yes saying i can't be that for you that's not true you could but you're choosing not to i choose not i to. won't i won't be able to and that's something mm-hmm. again you mentioned it and i i just felt like i i had to jump in there because the the your tongue this is a quote that i'm stealing but your tongue is the rudder for the rest of your life we have to be so conscious Ooh. of the words the words that we speak even the words that we think and we say when i if i if you say over and over and over and over again unconsciously i can't do that one day your reality will be that you can't and what can't looks like when it's set when in regards to holding space for someone that probably means you're not even here mm-hmm. right okay. but what the difference is is you won't and that's a boundary and i think that is one of the sexiest things in the world i love when people say that to me I'm like shout out respect i get it man boundaries love it i respect that get back to me when you can hold that space or when you're able to hold that space um so yeah it's again the unconscious mind just takes over and says these things but what we really should be saying what we really could be saying is a more powerful way which is i won't be able to because we can we're just choosing not to do you remember if i'm not sure we've ever had this conversation because we've talked so much do you ever remember the catalyst where you you know chose to step into this um this journey towards self-awareness when you realize that you know what something has to change you know because we always have that trigger moment what uh, dr phil in his book self matters calls the defining moment you have a couple of those throughout your lifetime the way he puts it but in terms of you because you've had ups and downs and you've had some really really lows and some incredible highs but would you ever remember a moment where you know this journey of self-awareness you know like birth from for you yeah 2016 it's really easy for me to say 2016 when the marriage that i was in a seven-year marriage 10-year relationship it just stopped and i learned so much about myself through that process and i'm so grateful and i send so much love to that person and anyone else that was impacted uh, by that relationship in that relationship through that relationship that was a massive awakening for me in so many ways. Uh, and the biggest one was getting in touch, uh, dramatically getting in touch with the fact that it's the Marcus Aurelius memento more. Uh, you could leave life right now. So let that dictate what you day, what you do, part of me and what you say. I just realized that, Hey, at the time I was, what's a quick math is 23. That's, uh, nine years ago, um, so I was 31 years old. Is that right? No, that's not right. 2016. Is that right? Seven years ago. There you go. Mm-hmm. Math. So I was 33 years old, and I did the math, and I'm thinking, like, man, I've only got maybe 50, 60 years left at best. What am I doing? Am I truly happy? Am I truly living? Am I am I fulfilled? And I'd never asked myself that question before. In 33 years of living, wow. I've never checked in with myself to say, are you happy, Brad? And when I did, the answer was no. And then that transpired and manifested in a bunch of different ways. But I'm so grateful for that. And I'm sure uh, that person would say the exact same thing as 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 challenging as it was it set me up down the path that I don't want to say that I'm on right now because there's probably been other turns that I've made since then, Mm -hmm. but it really, it really opened my eyes to, am I happy? What even is happiness? Where does it exist? It definitely is an external 
And I'm so grateful for that pain and what it taught me. Do you, I ask this question a lot of, um, of people like you who are open enough and empathetic enough to be that vulnerable. Do you believe that we have to go through some form of um, hurt, sorrow, trauma, call it whatever you want, uh, a very like, you know, earth shattering moment where, you know, for us to actually get the point where, you know, you do have to make some change or some adjustments to, or do, or are we just, some of us are just like so consumed by not looking inward. Cause a lot of us, I'm, I'm sorry to say, but a lot of us are, are living in some kind of fallacy or some kind of, you know, self-imposed farce because they're not courageous enough or they don't have the audacity to ask themselves, are you happy? Are you okay with this? Is this working for you? Do we have to go through that, again, to that hurt? Do we have to hit a wall? Do we have to go through a burnout like I did before we figure it out? Or can we at some point get a blueprint somewhere <laughs> to avoid the, 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 the heartache and the pain at some point? Do you think? Uh, I think life is just going to give us what we need. It's not going to give us what we want. And... I think there's there's a there's a select few that are truly enlightened, and when I say that, what comes to mind is like Buddha for me. Or currently, I'm really into Sadhguru and these people that seem to be in touch with a divine. And others, and I I lump myself into others as well. I think we do need that, and I, I everyone here has been touched by death in some way, shape, or form, and I think it's those, you know. That acquaintance, not the friend, but the acquaintance, the guy who knew a guy and you knew the guy and you met him at a party and all of a sudden mm -hmm. he's no longer with us. We're That's actually, uh, without sounding disrespectful, uh, it's actually a gift, meaning that's life tapping you and saying, remember this thing, this journey that we're on? This isn't immortal. You are mortal. This will end. So get to whatever it is that you feel compelled to get to because that just happened and it very well could have been you. So I think for some of us, and I know what you've dealt with a little bit, obviously I don't know it in, in detail and you, and I never will because I'm not you just like you never will know mine because you're not me. But I think that is a bit of the human flaw and part of our protection mechanism as well is to be a bit ignorant to the mortality of all of this and it takes a bit of the rude awakening the divorce or the death for us to go holy wow okay i'm awake now i mm. i feel it okay so i better get busy living because what else could i do and the answer to that is just go on autopilot which mm. which is dangerous as far as i'm concerned mm -hmm. see there you go. Because when you stay with the status quo and when you're not, when you're too afraid to actually look outside that door or down that hall, what else is there? Okay. I tell my kids this all the time. Like, listen, life is like a series of doors. And the thing is, the second you cross the door, the beautiful thing is that it's not the last door. It's a series of unlimited doors afterwards and the next door and the next door and the next door. But daddy, which is the right door? You will never know. I don't know. You don't know. Just pick a door. Just pick a door because you can't you can't stay where you are either way because guess what? Karma is going to take care of it. Life is going to take care of it because life is fluid. Life moves forward. And you understand that, you know what? Every single day, every single day is a gift. Every single day is a gift. And believe it or not, you can't see me because of the camera not working. But I'm telling you this right now. Before our recording or over the book, I've been uh, re- uh, re getting acquainted because you know we i did get life the recipe brad's book you guys are not seeing this but uh i was one of the you know advanced purchases of the book and i still love <laughs> it and i really highlighted this it's one of, just before grandma pierogi's recipe you did put it in your own words life's recipe listen to this guys life's recipe is living each day like none of this is given i'm gonna say it again life's recipe is living each day like none of this is given do you still believe that, Brad? Mm, absolutely. And I actually shared with Lindsay this morning. We were having a bit of quiet time, but the kids got up and I got just got back from my run and listening to a podcast. And I forget who it was, but it just hit me. And it was, what if tomorrow the only things 
that were in your life were the things that you are grateful for today? Mm. What if the only things that showed up in your life tomorrow were the things that you were grateful for today? So, yeah, it's just how dare we at the very least not practice gratitude and how dare we just think this is given? How dare we just say, oh, tomorrow I'll have another opportunity? Likely, likely, yes, we will, statistically speaking, but over a million people won't wake up tomorrow morning. Yep. And and that to me is a call to action. This isn't given. Your kid's health isn't given. Your friend that you haven't talked to in nine months being there for your next birthday isn't none of this stuff is given. And I think again, I don't think that is a morbid thing. I think it's a beautiful thing because it calls us to be more awake. It calls us to be more aware. And hopefully it calls us to going back to, again, I talked about it twice already is, is tuning in with ourselves and saying, what do I want? How do I want to show up? How do I want to serve? And what's the impact I want to have? And yeah, those words will always ring true for me. I hope because I hope it keeps me honest throughout my day and keeps me grounded because none of this is given this is literally every moment is that's why they call it the present right the present mm-hmm. the present moment is the gift this is the gift but but brad but brad i hear a lot of people saying that brad if i'm just focused on what i want if i just focus on who i am and doesn't that make me sound selfish and self-serving and if if it's is it all about me what well, it sounds very <laughs> navel centered why, why is it I'm supposed to just cater to everybody else and think about myself last? Isn't that what being generous is, Brad? <laughs> no, it's not. That was a great interpretation of people, though. Um, no, it's 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 so cliche, and cliches exist for a reason because they are cliche. It's the it's the mask on the airplane. You put your mask on first and it's so difficult. And I know you and I could talk hours on this as fathers in young families. We're just trying to find our way still. Like how do we navigate this thing? And how often am I making the kids breakfast before I even have a sip of water? Or how often am I doing this for the, and part of me feels like it is my duty, but then I have again, that objective view of myself and go, wait a second, pause, get a glass of water take a minute the kids are fine your friends your family your your boss they you're no good to them if you're not good so we have to i would say more often than not be selfish and going back to what we just talked about say no i won't be able to do that set boundaries because if you're not good, how can you expect to show up in this crazy world? And the answer is you can't. And eventually you won't. And I don't want that for you or anyone else. My God. I'm so full of energy right now. We are coming up on top of the hour. But as you said, you're a brother and I love you. We could <laughs> be talking for hours, but you know yes. how rigorous we do, I am. We should, do, we should do a marathon. We should do a podcast marathon 24 hours we shirts should, off we should do that we no, should definitely you don't do drink that. coffee i only have one coffee a day so i'd have to like sip it really slowly but I'll, i will have some tea i'll have some tea i can okay. do tea great do tea, but you know what we do we do have to have one of those joe rogan episodes where we just like hit record <laughs> and just run with it you know because you're one of the very few people i would do that with but you know i'm if you, i'm only doing this because i respect your time um brad again thank you for this time Thank you for blessing us, as always, with your wisdom, your expertise, your perspective. Um, there are a lot of lessons learned uh, from this exchange, and I'm hoping people did take notes. Um, it's, again, a very, very huge privilege uh, to know you. And like I said, to be part of your universe, uh, this is not the last of our conversations. I have Ooh. to get my ass up to Nova Scotia. I will yes. do that at some point. Uh, but I'll definitely like you know, call you ahead, say I'm coming, or surprise <laughs> you. What the hell? I'm but with that. Uh, it's definitely something that is in the cars and because uh, I got to come say hi and, you know, give ourselves a big, 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 nice bro hug because that has mm-hmm. to happen. It's been too long. Mm-hmm. But, Brad, uh, for all the wonderful people listening to us who would want to connect with you on the interwebs, where can we connect with you? Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you for being such a great friend. Uh, there are very few people 
that I feel so connected with that I haven't met in person and you and I uh, haven't had that pleasure in meeting in the flesh. Um, but the messages that we share, like I said, at the start of the podcast and just how vulnerable you are with me and how you allow me to be me and how I hopefully allow you to be you is really oh, sure. special. And I, I value that very, very much. And I hope you feel that from, from me as well. Definitely. In, re- in regards to connecting with me, it's just Brad Bodner, com is the website or I'm pretty active on Instagram uh, as well. It's just Brad Bodner, on Instagram. And then uh, my podcast, which I will, uh, be waiting to lay out the red carpet for you on as well is just the Brad Bodner Chuck podcast. Subscribe, like, subscribe, share, but not before you like, subscribe, and share to Awaken, <laughs> Awaken the Awesome. Obviously, oh man, oh man. Uh, just asking, uh, can we still get the book uh, on the on the website as well? Or you know what, the that's a the book the, the, you brought up the book is so funny, man. That is that's something that I've been battling a lot. Um, that just didn't work out the way okay. I wanted it to. Okay. And I, you, people can still buy it. Go ahead and purchase it. It's great. But I'm going to, I'm, I'm saying it here on record for the first time ever externally. I'm going to do a volume two mm-hmm. um, for, for numerous reasons, but, uh, but no, I appreciate you reading from it. And I appreciate you shouting out my grandmother's pierogi recipe. Uh, hi, grandma grandma's 94 and she's still, wow. kicking. she's still kicking it in edmonton and she she comments on my instagram post she even uses the appropriate emojis grandma you are killing that it. is we killer. love you wow yeah. love grandma you grandma Bonacha. yeah she's amazing she's a grandmother to many and a great great grandma i'm sorry and a great grandmother to many many more um so yeah the book is still there mm-hmm. check it out you can buy it online and, we'll do. Uh, I'll leave the links. Yeah, yeah. and th- and thank you, man. Seriously, so much. You were, you're so patient with me, and I've always been prepared for you to say go pound sand. Uh, with how many times I've I've had to shuffle my schedule around on you. So, uh, no worries, massive, you're a brother. Massive, you're a brother. Massive thank you for your understanding. No problem whatsoever. No problem whatsoever. As you know, long running tradition on the podcast. Final word, the red carpet. You know, as we like to call it, the next step. As always, you know, to someone, either a quote, a song lyric, a book, uh, you know, an affirmation that anyone can wake up tomorrow using at the next step towards their next level. Is there anything we can leave the listeners with? Oh, wow. Uh, this one will will go with me to the grave. And it is um, everyone wishes to be settled, but only so much as they're unsettled. Is there any hope for them? So get uncomfortable. <sighs> seek discomfort and get unsettled because if we don't there's no hope for us oh man see wow what a way what a way to close out the recording oh brad got nothing but love for you man ladies and gentlemen my guy brad bogner chuck from nova scotia all the way up to Kanzak, quebec please do check him out all his content all his writing not just instagram brad bonnerchuck.com brad bonnerchuck the podcast be sure to check out all the show notes on the episode once it goes live. Brad, you're a fellow brother and an honored king. Thank you so much for your wonderful wisdom and kindness. Guys, another episode of Wake and the Awesome in the can. As always, please, guys, do share the message. Share, share the message. Share the message, please, because we need to keep this podcast going. We thank you for your love and support. Stay blessed. Stay safe. And as always, do stay awesome. This has been another episode of the Awaken the Awesome podcast. We always love to get your feedback, so please do drop us a line via Instagram, Facebook, or email. Our email address, awakentheawesome at gmail.com. Do visit our official website at awakentheawesome.ca, where you can find our entire back catalog of episodes and incredible guests. Also, if you haven't already, please hop on over to Apple Podcasts and subscribe, give us a rating, and leave us a review, as this helps us tremendously in growing this podcast and spreading the word to more awesome listeners like you. We always appreciate your support, and thank you for listening. Stay awesome.